Assalamu alaikum dear learners. I welcome you all to Allama Iqbal Open University Studio. I hope you're enjoying good health and enjoying your studies as well. You know, to help you with your studies, the university has started a series of programs that will all focus on different aspects of the English language. And I believe that you will find these programs quite useful. All of us know that we use language to survive in society because it is a basic and main source of communication. We all use language to convey our feelings to other members of our society. You might have noticed that to speak our own language, we don't need to learn the rules. But to speak some other language, we must know the rules to convey the message successfully. You know, when I entered the college, I was really afraid of English and its grammar. But some of my friends told me something very interesting. They said, I should not be worried about English rules because even the Englishmen did not use these rules when they spoke with each other. That time I believed it was true, but now I feel it's a very funny idea, isn't it? I mean, have you ever used your mother tongue without using tenses or the rules of grammar? Surely not, as we cannot convey our messages or feelings to other people without using the rules of grammar. In other words, if proper time concept is not used, it will be difficult for the listener to decode the real message. So to teach you the proper time concept, today we will be starting our first program. This program will focus on the present simple tense. But before we start the tense formally, I would like to give you the origin of the word tense. The word tense has been derived from the Latin word tempus, that means time. So you must have got the idea that tenses are used to convey time concept and different languages use the idea of time differently. Most languages in the world make use of verb to do so. For example, English, Urdu, French, etc. in most of the languages. In all these languages, the verb takes different shapes to convey different time concepts. For instance, in Urdu we say, wo pita hai, wo piega, usne pia, etc. And in the similar fashion in English we say, he drinks, he will drink, and he drank. Now that you've got some idea of the time concept, be careful in using it for English language. Since English is an entirely different language, naturally it has its own rules of grammar. And once you have learned the rules of English grammar, you will find it both interesting and easy. So are you ready to take off? Not like an aeroplane, of course. So my plan is to teach the tense from two different angles, the form and the function. And I hope that you will enjoy learning this tense. Form simply means the structure of the tense and the function means how and where it should be used. You know the problem with our education system is that it does not give importance to the function of English language and restricts its learning to the learning of rules only. Now you should recall how you were taught tenses in your school and then ask yourselves why you forgot those rules soon after the exam was over. As I said earlier, we will be doing today's tense from two different angles. Now be careful in learning the form of it. First, affirmative or the positive form. I hope you know the basic formula of SVO, where S means subject, V means main verb, and O means object. I'll give you some examples. Sami writes a letter. So in this sentence, I'm using writes. I mean, I'm adding S to the base form that is right. The reason is Sami. It means we can make a rule here. When we use single person, single person's name, let's say Sami, Sara, anybody, we use S or ES with the main verb. That's where the sentence is Sami writes a letter, Ali plays football, etc. You pluck a flower. It means when we use you, we don't need to use S. So the base form remains same. Similarly, I boil an egg. With I we don't use S as we don't use with U and V as well. She posts the letter. With pronouns he, she, it, we do use S. If you don't use it, the sentence will be wrong. But here be careful while pronouncing certain verbs. For example, teaching English grammar in my classes, I have observed that many Pakistani students mispronounce this word. Even many Chinese students, when Turkish, I mean many foreigners, they mispronounce these words. For example, T-E-A-C-H-E-S should be teaches, not teach. But you will hear many people from today onwards 
observe this thing that people mispronounce its word. Same is the case with the word judge. When ES is added, it becomes judges, but people say judge. That is wrong. So you should learn judges and teachers are the right form, and teach and judge are wrong. Now we'll move to the second aspect, that is negative form, negative structure of the same tense. It is subject plus helping verb with not, the main verb and then object. Example, Sami does not write a letter. You see, I haven't changed the sentence so that it becomes easy for you to learn. Sami in the past sentence used writes with it, but now it is does, because of does, writes changes into write because s shifts back to do that becomes does. So the sentence is Sami does not write a letter. Similarly, you do not pluck a flower, I do not boil an egg, but she does not post the letter, does with she, don't forget. The third aspect, interrogative, that means question. Here the formula changes slightly, the helping verb that is do or does comes to the beginning, subject goes after that, and the main verb and then object, if needed. For example, does Sami write a letter? And here, by the way, don't forget to put the question mark. In our examination system, people are really very particular about these things. If, for example, you construct the whole structure properly, but forget to put question mark, your sentence will be considered wrong. So be careful there. Similarly, do you pluck a flower? Do I boil an egg? Does she post the letter? And this reminds me of English tone as well. Tone is very important that I think we use in all languages. Tone gives us different clues. So when you want to use a tone for a question form, it must be the rising tone. In statement, it is falling. For example, see these two sentences. The sun rises in the east, that is falling. Will he come tomorrow? That is the rising tone. I hope you are enjoying the lesson. Now that we have done the form of the tense, we will move to the functions that I think are more important than the form. First of all, we use a present simple tense to talk about a habitual action, I mean something that you do in your routine. For example, the child drinks milk every day. Imran plays football in the evening. I get up early in the morning. And we also use the same tense for the general truths means the things which are universally considered correct. For example, the sun rises in the east. I mean, have you ever seen the sun rising in the west? No. It sets in the west. Birds fly. Some birds don't fly. We often use this tense for future event, something that is yet to happen. For example, when does the college open? We leave for Lahore tomorrow. The team leaves for tour next week. I will join the meeting if he picks me in time. We also use a present simple tense to introduce quotations. For example, Keats says, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. It's a beautiful line, but you see, look at the structure. First, Keats, the person who said this thing, and then quotation marks, and his actual wording should be put inside these quotation marks. I can give you some more examples. For example, the president says, we will help the flood of activities. The prime minister claims, we have done a lot for the country. The philosopher claims, the earth does not revolve around the sun. Instead of present continuous tense, in sport commentaries, for example, the simple present tense is used instead to describe activities in progress where there is stress and focus on the happening rather than on the duration. For example, I hope all of you enjoy cricket, you like to watch the matches. So some of the sentences you may hear in future, Shweb bounces the ball hard. Yusuf hits a towering sixer. Up goes the ball. You can see in all these sentences, present simple tense has been used, although action is going on at the moment of speaking. But in commentaries and in some other situations, present simple tense is used. You will find the same examples in some newspapers, for example, Pakistan leaves for New Zealand tomorrow. So it is not present continuous or some other form, but the present simple tense. Similarly, we use present simple tense for a series of events. 
For example, when we talk about series of actions and events that are completed as we speak, we usually use this tense. For example, watch carefully. First I take a bowl and break two eggs. Then I beat the eggs for about five minutes. In the same fashion, it keeps on going. So the tense does not change. It is simple present tense. Similarly, we often use this tense to give instructions to someone or to guide someone. For example, first of all, scratch the number, then feed the number to the mobile phone, after that, etc. So this is how this tense is used. So learners today, I hope you learned a lot of things. We did this tense from two different angles. We did the form first and then we did the function. Keep this thing in mind that whenever you use this tense, don't forget to use do or does in negative and interrogative. For positive, you simply use s or es with the main verb. And don't forget, in English, it is a verb that changes the time concept. And different shapes give us different time concepts. So in positive sentence, use s or es. In negative, do, does, and the verb again changes into the base form. Remember, there are some verbs which can't be used in present continuous tense that we'll be doing in the next program. And those verbs which can't be used in present continuous tense must be used in the present simple tense. For example, I like this picture. I cannot say I'm liking this picture because you will not find such a construction in English. That sounds very awkward. Similarly, do you believe what he says? So we cannot say I'm believing or you're believing. That is wrong again. The third sentence, the box contains toffees. You cannot say the box is containing toffees. Here it must be box contains toffees because contains can't be used in the ing form. Similarly, you've got number of verbs which can't be used in ing. I can give you some of them. Doubt. I doubt he will come today. I cannot say I'm doubting. No. I know what you're saying. I cannot say I'm, no I'm knowing what you're saying. Love. He loves his children. And here I would like to give you something else, something very important for you, a tip for exam. After love, we never use any preposition. Usually it is used like that is we use with, with it. Like he loves with his kids. That is wrong. In English, it should be he loves his children. In Urdu, it may be okay, but in English, we must use it without with. Hate. I hate him. He hates you. So, with hate, we don't use any form. Similarly, prefer and realize. And then you've got recognize. Remember. I cannot say I'm remembering what he said. Here you can say I'm recalling. So remember it can't be used in the ing form. Understand. Yes, I think that is very commonly misused verb. I've heard many students using with ing form. I understanding what you're saying. And I think they simply translate from their mother tongue. So there are many other English verbs which can't be used in ing form. For example, doubt, no, love. Yes, the word love reminds me of something very interesting. Pakistani people, when they use this verb, love, they act where they did. That is wrong, I think. I think they simply translate from their mother tongue. So in English, if you say he loves with his children, that is wrong. You must say he loves his children. In Urdu, it might be okay if you use with. Similarly, hate, prefer, realize, recognize, remember, understand. Understand again reminds me of the same mistake which Pakistani students commit. Even many foreign learners commit the same mistake. They add ing with it. Perhaps I think they get the idea from their mother tongue. If you observe this thing in Urdu language, we say, but in English, we don't say, I am understanding. That is wrong. You simply say, I understand. And then suppose, we cannot say, I'm supposing. We say, I suppose, want, and wish, and sound. You've got some more uh, examples. Uh, like taste, the food tastes sweet, and agree, and you've got deny, mean, satisfy, impress. 
And one of uh, commonly used verbs is belong. You will see that it is never used in ING form. And one more mistake committed by Pakistani students is that they add with with it. For example, he belongs with or belongs from Lahore. Again, translating from the mother tongue into English language. That is wrong. So when you use English, try to sound like that as far as grammar is concerned. So it should be he belongs from or this belongs, uh, you will say, he, this, he belongs to Lahore, not from Lahore. And I think the better uh, expression is, he comes from Lahore. If you want to use the word belong, never use from, use to. Then you've got on, matter, depend, consist. In the similar fashion, you've got some more verbs which can't be used in present simple tense. So I hope you've understood the idea. These verbs should not be used in ING form. They must take the present simple tense. So I hope you liked today's lesson that was basically on the present simple tense. At the end, I would give you some description, let's say about, uh, about myself. And you will see the main focus is going to be on the present simple tense. I'll tell you something about myself. And uh, you can simply use the same thing for someone else. Now, I'm a teacher. I teach in a university. Here I cannot say I teaches. I teach because I'm using I, not he or she. I teach in a university. I really enjoy teaching this subject because it is interesting. Something from my personal life. I try to get up early in the morning. You see, try. Try is a verb that is used here. I cannot say I'm trying or I, I will try. I try to get up early in the morning. Then I prefer to go to the mosque. I say my prayer. And when I come back, Instead of coming back to my home, I go to the garden. I like to take morning walk. Then I come back, I take my breakfast, and I change, and then I go to my university. So this is how this tense is used. And I've seen that people simply, they lose so many marks in examination uh, because of S or ES. Either they don't add S, or they simply add at two different places. Instances, he don't go wrong I think it is wrong it should be he doesn't go and in examination you should use a full form he does not not doesn't it should be does not go many foreign learners of English when they want to change present simple tense into negative or interrogative here they commit mistakes for example the sentence says my friend plays football in the evening might be changed into negative wrongly my friend does not plays football in the evening. That is wrong. When you have changed do into does, that S in fact has come from play, from the verb. So plays will become play and do will become does because of my friend. Third person singular. Don't forget the formula. Whenever you use third person singular means he, she, it or it can be somebody's name. You must use S or ES with a verb in positive sentences, but the moment you change these sentences into negative or interrogative, do becomes does, and the verb with S becomes the simple base form. So this sort of mistakes must be avoided. And in question form, you know, again, the same thing I'll repeat, that question form, that question mark must be used. If you don't put question mark, it means that's wrong sentence. It's a big problem for us because what happens whenever we want to learn a language, any foreign language, you will see, not with us only, everywhere in the world, whenever a person wants to learn some other language, his mother tongue comes on the way. Yes, it may help as well, but I've seen that in the case of grammar, in pronunciation, and in some other areas, it puts a lot of problems on the way. And what happens then? People start using the grammar of their language to use the foreign language. What I want to say is, if you want to speak English, then you must use the grammar of English, not the grammar of Urdu language. That might become something very ridiculous, something that people may laugh at. So avoid this thing. So using this present simple tense, keep in mind these facts that do, does are very important in this tense. And when you use a base form, it must be used with S or ES. 
Here you don't need to bother about, let's say, the past forms of different verbs because that is the area of the past tense. But here simply the shape is same, the base form, but it must take S or ES with it. So I, ho I hope you like today's program and I really, I look forward to uh, receiving your feedback and I hope we'll be doing other programs in the same fashion that you will find quite useful for your future, for your exam, for your life because you might be having some foreign friends in future. So if you want to speak with them, Definitely you can't speak their language. Let's say you've got a friend from Saudi Arabia. You can't speak Arabic. He can't learn. He can't speak your language. So the best way is to go for a language that can be used by both of them. And you see English has become a global language. People use it all over the world. And there are people in the past who never wanted to learn English. Those even, I mean, they hated I mean, the idea of learning English. But now they're compelled. They're coming out of their shells to learn English, to become the part of the global community. So you may have a friend from some other country or even in Pakistan you will see some kids now, some young children going to some private language schools. They are very fluent in English language. So to be on the safe side, you must know these rules so that whenever in future you need to use this language in your school, in your college, in your office even, or in society in general. Or maybe you can visit some foreign country. You must use distance properly. And I think it leaves good impression if you speak good English. If you commit a lot of mistakes, people might laugh at you. And you, today you will hear many people around you, those who want to learn English, those who want to speak English, but they've got problems. They don't know the rules. When they want to, when they, whenever they speak something, they speak it wrongly. So I hope you liked today's program. And I'm really thankful to you for being with me. I hope uh, it is something interesting, although people have uh, made this thing something very difficult, something very boring, but I think if you learn English grammar from uh, the point of your function and form, it becomes something very interesting. And I hope we'll be doing the other programs in the same fashion. And I really look forward to receiving your feedback. That will help me, that will help you, and that will also help the university. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz. Thank you.